Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead Brooklyn. And I know so many of us have philodendrons. They're a very popular houseplant, but how many of us actually propagate them? Well, I'm here today with Enid from NSC Tropicals in order to propagate some philodendrons. So let's get started. <laughs> So what I love about philodendrons is that I think they're really having their moment. Maybe you could tell me if I'm wrong, but when I look on Instagram and everything, everybody's like doing philodendron Friday and, and they grow relatively well, not as big as what we see out here in Florida, but I know a lot of people are trying to propagate their philodendrons. So I'm hoping that you could maybe show us some of the, the techniques that you use. Um, well, what I generally try to do is cut it. You've got too much new growth up here. You would mm -hmm. normally not cut with so much new growth. I try to go in an area like this where it's a little bit tougher. And generally I would wait till about March or so. The days need to be getting longer. And if you've got a plant like this, this is an expensive plant and it's kind of hard to grow to begin with and if you start chopping on it in January you're opening up uh, you're opening up a wound maybe this roots and then you lose your other plant so it's really best to wait until you've got longer days and you know so, so warm even, temperatures so even in Florida where I I'm you know I'm coming down from New York and I'm like oh this temperature is so good but the plants really know that the days are shorter even down here absolutely they root um, something will root in the summer four weeks very well uh, in the summer. Four weeks in the winter, if I cut, now this right here, it'll just wait until March to do anything. So you think, oh, I'm ahead of the game. You're not, it's just right where you left it. It's like, it just stays there and waits for the warmer weather. And now this is a philodendron serpent? Yes, okay. philodendron serpents. You've it, got this squamous petioles here, it's, great it's plant. Absolutely beautiful. So, you know, this down here is a little, you said like woodier, and then this stem is also pretty, pretty woody as well. You could also do down here, mm -hmm. but, what you want to do is leave the original plant with enough um, leaves and enough so they can keep going because you know I could chop right. it right here but then there's nothing right. for that one right. and again I, I could get away with cutting this now but it's not optimal you know you it, it'll just kind of sit there and not root and yep. not die either so yep. it's just really best to do it at the proper time of year and it really took me um, a long long time to learn and actually do it and how long does it take to you know, grow to a place where you could actually cut it. Because when I think of philodendron, sometimes I think that they're, especially maybe this one, a little bit more of a slower grower compared to like, say a plectranthus or a begonia, for instance. Um, again, in the summer, everything grows so fast that I'll feel like things will have, be ready to cut and they haven't even rooted. So mm -hmm. they grow so fast in the summer that it's more a matter of controlling them you know, I try to use smaller pots for two reasons. One is shipping because I don't want to ship this big heavy pot. And the other is almost like a bonsaiing them, like stay small enough so that I can, otherwise I'd have stuff all over the benches. Do you want to show us? Okay, I was saying I'd cut about here. Also, uh, just below a node is a good place, just below a node, like where the leaf is coming out. Mm -hmm. You don't want to cut it, you cut it way down here and you've just got this much stem there. Uh, it's just going to rot off, so you're better off doing it just below a node here. And then I would just... You can use rooting hormone on here if you like. Yep. I don't always. What are you potting it up in? It's very important to have a, a nice mix that's got a lot of drainage. Um, again, especially during this time of year, you can mix some orchid bark in it. Yeah. You can... Perlite is your friend. I mean, yes, absolutely. I see I'll that you have generous perlite. Oh, yeah, in there. I'm like 50% <laughs> perlite because also they're going on a mist bench yeah. and they're going to be wet all the time. So yeah, so you need a lot of that drainage. Yes, yeah. most important. I mean, you could go you go to Home Depot or something and buy some. It says potting mix, and in yeah. reality, it's yeah. just like sludge. Yeah. You know, when you get it wet. I find that a lot of the potting mixes are very peat heavy, especially right. now more than ever. I feel like when I bought potting mixes like back in the day, there was far less peat, but now I see some on the market, and maybe it's just a byproduct of what I see in my particular market, but. I, I, I sense that it's almost all peat and very little perlite. So sometimes I'll buy perlite or even like a vermiculite as well, just to kind of mix in my own. And how do you, how do you know when they start to root? Do you do a little tug test or? Um, yes, sometimes I'll have to check because you may take something like this and go, like for example, this one here is partially rooted. And if mm. you tugged on that, you'd yeah. think, well, that's pretty rooted. Yeah. 
And um, as I was saying earlier, this is a, the, as much as this is rooted, like if you took this with you, it's okay. But for me to ship this, it's just really not, it's got some roots in there. Right, but not fully. It's really not rooted yeah. enough to go in the mail. It's gonna be, you know, one little bump is gonna snap off the roots. So it's really best to wait until they're well rooted. So if you tug it, you think, oh, it's, you know, it's rooted well enough. And then you pull it out and you're like, if you got this in the mail, you'd be like, excuse me. <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> so I know a lot of people who have philodendrons in their house kind of go a little bit more of the easy route and stick their philodendron in a glass of water. I think that's really characteristic for anybody kind of in apartment living or, or whatnot. Is there a difference between a philodendron whose roots are growing in water compared to one growing in maybe a, a sphagnum perlite potting soil mix? I haven't done a lot of rooting in water. Um, sometimes those roots can kind of be very uh, succulent and delicate when you do go to put it in the soil. That's a great space saver for a windowsill or mm -hmm. something like that, but I haven't, I haven't done much with the water. So you are strictly on the soil side then? I don't want to have to pot everything yeah. twice, yeah. three times. That totally makes sense. Yeah. And then how about this one as well? So this one is, has this just been cut or? This has not just been cut, it's probably decently rooted, but okay. this is philodendron luxuriens, and this is just a great oh, plant. So New leaves stunning. are lime green, and it, it's not, so Serpens is a climber, and if you give it a totem, the leaves will be much bigger, and it'll go straight up. Mm -hmm. This one is more of a crawler. In mm. fact, it'll kind of just crawl up right out of the pot, mm. similar to the way Gloriosum um, just wants to kind of go sideways. So um, to cut these, you would just kind of section it. Same thing, look for, you can look at it and mm -hmm. tell that really you would not want to cut it where it's so green right, and new right. growth. You'd it here or even here, yeah. but I'd go here so as to leave something, something on there. the other plant. Yeah, and then when you actually make the incision, say we made an incision in this one, there's, you know, this is a fresh cut. What happens to that fresh cut? Does it callus over? Does it start to suberize? Should you feel maybe a little bit concerned that it'll get fungus in there? Or how do you, how do you deal with that? Um, usually it'll callus over. I, generally, if I just make a cut, I don't go put it back on the mist ben bench right away because okay. you've got a fresh cut. You just stuck it back in the water. Um, and you can, usually the rooting hormone has an antifungal in it. You can kind of dab it on there as well. So you're kind of, while you're treating the cutting, you're also treating this. So if I'm getting this, uh, this, philodendron luxuriance from you and I see that you have this kind of potting mix with it where it's like a little bit more heavy on perlite and you have some osmundo bark fiber or whatever it might be should I try to recreate that soil mixture or if I just put it into regular potting soil will that matter well it would depend on a few things again it should always be well draining and you could look at that and go well she's used a lot of perlite and um, it's not always you have everything you need and some of these store-bought potting soils are just really heavy. You water them and it's mud and mm -hmm. it just never dries out again. Um, it, yeah, as best you can, but then I've bought things that were in a really heavy soil that I thought, well, I can do better than that. So it should be changed just because it's better for the plant. Um, another thing I've noticed is a lot of people want to repot the second they get a plant in the mm -hmm. mail and it's like, give the poor thing a break. It just got there. Let it sit down in the shade mm -hmm. and relax. Everything doesn't have to be repot. You know, I, again, since I send in small pots, people yeah. want to, you know, you know, stick it in a three gallon pot and, you know, it, they really need to kind of rest. It's like if after a long trip, you just need to rest a little bit. It's best to give them at least a week or so to kind of get used to um, the move. And Hopefully, guys, this was like helpful for you in propagating your philodendrons. I mean, I'm sure that we can't all recreate a beautiful Florida climate, but you know, we could do the best within our home. So thank you so much. Thank you. Hopefully there's more propagation of philodendrons in your future. And remember, if you like this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And you can follow along on my journey on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com and on Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. See you next week. If you haven't yet, don't forget to check out the Houseplant Masterclass campaign on Indiegogo In Demand. It's going to be up for the next 60 days and you can actually donate to the project in order to be able to get early access and other rewards. So check it out here.